So he, he, that's Don. He's he's one of our developers, and uh, that's a good hair day for Dom. So <laughs> <laughs> hi, Dom. <laughs> so I don't know what she's there. Uh, and Dom's bigger than me, so that's probably a problem that I'm making fun of him there. Uh, so you make changes to a local site. You record those configuration changes. So every time I make a change, I make a, a setting change, I write it down. Notepad, if I'm by myself, wiki, somewhere, I write every single change down. I save all of my code changes to Subversion. So they all go here. <laughs> I tag them as production. Now I've got a reproducible, I know that this is my production release, so I've got a production branch, I merge everything to my production branch, I tag it with a release number, some way of saying this is a reproducible, I know this is my production release. Okay, now what do you do? So, here's the way that it happens. You update code on the staging server, you go through an SPM <coughs> update or checkout or, or whatever. Um, you make your database changes all by hand. Everything, you go through your list and make that change, and make that change, and make that change, and hope you remembered every single one of them, hope you remember to write them all down, hope that you manage to actually go through step by step and get them all again. And then you test it, and you fix what broke, and you do it all over again. Because now your code doesn't work in production, and it's a repeating thing. Keep on doing it. Autopilot, which I don't, I can't demo, but you know, trust me, it works and it works pretty well. Um, autopilot, you pop open Autopilot. It's a menu item in Drupal. You just go click on it, click deployment. You go through and you pick your release. Hey, here's a list of releases. Who's released a module on Drupal.org before and gone through their release management system? Where you go through and you create a node and you say, here's the release. So we've got one that's created a module and released it on there. Excellent. Um, you have a list of your releases sitting in there and you pick one. And you say, okay, I want to deploy the staging. And I'm doing this from one, from one particular server. It doesn't matter. I can do it from a staging server, a dev server, whatever. And you click deploy. And what Autopilot does is it pulls in your production database automatically, takes all the changes that you've made on your dev server, it's been recording them, it plays them back on top of that production data. Now you have a completely merged staging server that, that is, that's working. You can do the same thing from a, a development server, a continuous integration server, a dev server. I've got five developers working on it. They're making changes. The changes are being recorded. Um, we're actually using a, a Firefox plugin that records at the UI level what they're doing, every step that they do, and replays all of those straight back. Is that iMacros? Selenium. Um, Selenium is excellent. User testing, you want to test something, the UI works, it's fantastic. Uh, so the developers are all making their changes in the local boxes. I want to push to a continuous integration server. Great, I'll push. I don't care if I've got the latest data. So you know, I'll leave the data up on the staging server, just use my, my management data. It pushes, checks out the code automatically, takes all those developer changes and replays them knows where those tech changes happened and where I'm checking out to this branch. That's the point of the changes. Oh, I've made changes farther than that. Don't go that far. Just check out right to here where this production branch is, run those changes, test your changes, make any fixes that are necessary, and you can do that all again. Click, boom, you're done. That's the going up to staging or a dev server. Is this being done through logs to the database changes? Um, so what we're doing is we're using a tool that sits, it's a Firefox browser add-in that actually watches everything the developer does in the config, in the admin UI. Every step that they take, every button they click, every piece of data they enter, it records that as they're doing it. And then it replays those changes nearly instantaneously, just like the developer was doing it themselves. Okay. We've tried doing it at the database level and recording all the changes that happen at the database. Um, we've run into a lot of issues with that. First of all, there's a lot of things that happen in the database um, that you end up recording that are just transient stuff and you start moving around. You know, the, the uh, cron job runs on search and builds a search index on the developer's database. So great, now we're moving all of that data up. We've, you know, developers have entered a ton of test data 
and now it's recording all of that. With Selenium, I can say, pause what I'm doing. I'm no longer doing config changes, I'm adding test nodes just so I can make sure this works. Okay, I'm done, let's start up recording again, I'm gonna make more config changes. You can't do that if we're recording at the database level. Do you have to organize with your other developers that for example, you can only work on views, you can only add content, you can only make structural changes to content types, so that there's no overlap? Um, it's generally a good idea that all your developers know what each other are working on anyway, and aren't working on the same stuff. Um, yes, you do. You don't want this. This will dutifully record if I make changes to the, the views and someone else unchanges those or changes something. It'll, it'll go through and do all of that. Um, you're going to end up with results you don't expect because I've got multiple people changing the same thing. So just like in your code, if two people change the same line of code, you get a conflict and versions or whatever says, hey, sorry, can't do this. What do you want to do about it? This works in conjunction with CBS. So this this is so the, this is all in the database stuff. This is all config changes on the front end of the site, and then we use uh, Subversion. Um, we actually have the capability of using a couple of other version control systems, but Subversion is the one that that works that we use the most and what we recommend for this. And it uses Subversion to check out the code. You tell it where your production tag is, and it checks out the code, builds it, and builds your database changes, applies your config changes. Is it easy to edit those steps that you're recording? I mean, so if you discover, oh, well, oops, I should have done this, should have done that, do you need to just re-record re the whole thing, or do you? There's tools for editing Selenium macros. Yeah. Um, depends on how complex your changes are. If you're dragging panels around in a JavaScript UI, right, yeah. I don't know how if that would work. If, you know, going and editing. There are some things that you can edit Selenium scripts. Uh, Selenium was designed for testing. It was designed to allow you to do a bunch of changes and replay those changes in test. So I can, I don't have to go through and submit, hey, I want to find out if my uh, sign-up form, if this change that I made broke my sign-up form. Well, I don't want to have to go through and type in a username and do all of that stuff over and over again. So Selenium, I recorded it, okay, play it. So that macro you're committing to the SDM repository, and it's automatically pulling that through autopilot based on the tag? Um, yes. Firefox 3, is it available yet? Selenium Firefox 3? I don't know. I looked, I, for it, I looked for it a few weeks back and couldn't find it. I don't know. Um, I haven't used Selenium since I've upgraded to Firefox 3, so I don't know. <laughs> You might be unpleasantly surprised. Well, I also have two running. Uh, you know, I can pop open two and run that if I need to. So, so my name is the Firefox plugin. What is Autopilot? Autopilot is the tool on the Drupal side, the module, the system of modules that does all of this stuff. It takes the Selenium test, replays that on top of it, pulls the code out of Subversion, places that, and, and does all the deployment pieces behind the scenes. Is it a trip module? I'm sorry? It's a contrib module? It is a contrib module. It's one that we wrote. It's the one that's on Drupal.org is kind of uh, old. not all the way there yet. Um, what, what did somebody say? Old. Old, it's yes. 2007. Yes, it is. Um, we are, I, I was actually hoping to have the URL ready for people to download it tonight and release. Um, there we cropped up a couple of little bugs that we wanted to fix this afternoon. Um, soon. I'm sorry? Soon, right? Soon. I hesitate to say soon because it feels like we've been saying soon it for is. months. Uh -huh. uh, but it, it's it, it's soon. Maybe we'll see an autopilot <laughs> session at Drupal Camp in September. I'm sorry? Maybe we'll see an autopilot session at Drupal Camp in September. Perhaps, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it'll be released on Drupal.org. Huh. Sounds great.